listen if you start something without him you started it wrong if you went and preached the gospel without him you preached the wrong gospel the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying Father words my name is Andrew Hemstraw Jesus thank you for joining us right if this is your first time here make sure you subscribe Ghost if this God isn't your first time here and these day. messages are blessing you then consider becoming a partner with us what if I told you that everything you knew was wrong I'm not saying that it is I'm saying that you need to be open to the possibility that what you know is wrong if you aren't open to the possibility that what you know is wrong you can't learn anything you're held in a box of your own ignorance say I don't know everything, I don't know everything. that right there enables you to learn something you didn't know before mm -hmm. the religious mind is not open to new things the religious mind thinks it already knows everything the religious mind thinks it's already right well, I know I'm right but we say we, we we need to be willing to change we're called to go from one glory to the next glory that automatically indicates that you've changed mm -hmm. from one thing to the next Holy Ghost worshipers know this they've changed they began doing something worshiping the Holy Ghost that they weren't doing before and a lot of their religious thinking their religious friends their religious upbringing wouldn't take them there mm -hmm. those that have worshiped the Holy Ghost enough say enough, enough. to be rewired and it's different this is different from what you used to do as a believer someone who was born again someone who was preaching the Word of God someone that was filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in other tongues this is different from that this is night and day different Amen. now the base truths that you know ultimately remain the same but your view of it changes your understanding of it goes to a different place that it wasn't before Israel the Jews they did what they knew to do and they believed they were following God in the best way that they possibly could did they think they were right mm -hmm. yeah. but they ultimately rejected the Messiah not only did they reject him they killed him following all of their law following all of their tradition following all of the word that they knew they rejected the one that was sent to them literally Jesus walking with them for three years anointed by the Holy Spirit to be with them teaching them for three years they missed it so religion blocked them from the truth it blocked them from receiving the one say the one, the one that God sent for them to receive the church also has a religion that it's embraced called Christianity there's many flavors and yet they all have the same similar thing going on but just like Israel their religious view and their religious ideas have kept them out of receiving the one Jesus sent the one Jesus sent first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 3 for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures verse 4 and he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures mm -hmm. verse 5 and that he was seen of Cephas that's Peter and of the 12 
right mm -hmm. who was seen of peter and the 12. Jesus. jesus was he rose from the dead and appeared to them he went around and visited them mm -hmm. so they could go he is raised from the dead yeah. verse 6 and after that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remain unto this day but some are falling asleep so he appeared to peter and the apostles and then 500 brethren at one time is that a big deal yeah. yes according to the scriptures now jesus showed himself as one raised from the dead to all of these people and every time he was with them he said this one particular phrase wait for the promise of the father acts chapter 1 verse 1 the former treaties have i made o theophilus of all that jesus began to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up so this hasn't happened yet he wasn't taken up yet he's talking about all the things he began to do and teach so jesus was still doing and teaching he was appearing and taught them things until he was taken up until the day in which he was taken up after that he through the holy ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen so he commanded them something the apostles and the 500 brethren that were with him to whom he had shown himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of god verse 4 and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from jerusalem you see the word command there mm -hmm. when he appeared to them he commanded them that they should not depart from jerusalem but wait say wait, wait. he commanded them to wait do you know what that means every beginner dog knows what that means stay mm -hmm. wait for the promise of the father which he saith you have heard of me so he's still talking about the promise of the father who's the promise of the father the holy, the holy ghost wait stop don't do anything just don't until right wait for the promise of the father which you have heard of me for john truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the holy ghost not many days hence verse 8 but you shall receive power after the holy ghost is come on you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth when after you receive the holy ghost he said wait say he said wait he said wait, he said, wait. if i don't wait am i obeying what jesus said no no i'm actually in disobedience so he appeared to all the apostles peter and above 500 brethren every time he appeared he said wait don't go anywhere just stay here don't do anything don't depart but wait for the promise we know the promise is the holy ghost stop don't do anything until he comes why because he's going to be the leader of the church he's god in the earth today and if you start listen if you start something without him you started it wrong if you went and preached a gospel without him as the base you preached the wrong gospel if i were to go before any of this happened before receiving the holy ghost to do so would be disobedience and would lead to future problems can you see that mm -hmm. so disobedience, disobedience leads to future problems. Leads to future problems think abraham and sarah's maidservant hannah mm -hmm. they tried to get the the promise going what did that happen what happened ishmael was born and he became the father of all arabic nations 
has that been a problem for israel yes thorn in the side big time still to this very day mm -hmm. disobedience mm -hmm. are you here yes jesus very specifically told them all the disciples not to leave jerusalem go to acts chapter 1 verse 15 and in those days peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of names together were about 120. they 120. 120. do you see a discrepancy here from the number 120 and the number 500 above 500. Yep. yes it's about three-fourths three-fourths of the people that saw and witnessed jesus being raised from the dead didn't wait disobeyed and still would have gone out and talked about jesus being raised from the dead are you here yes it caused a lot of problems and still is causing a lot of problems to this day did you see that my point of reading that verse was that there was about 120. Mm -hmm. right then you go to verse uh chapter 2 in the book book of acts and when the day of pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place talking about the 120 mm -hmm. say the 120, 120 not the 500 and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the holy ghost this was them receiving the promise of the father on the day of pentecost how many 120 three-fourths of the brethren say brethren, brethren that believed in the lord jesus being raised from the dead because they saw him weren't here to receive the holy ghost so 120 disciples obeyed and received the promise three-fourths of the brethren were in disobedience three-fourths of the disciples went off disobediently and preached a gospel without the holy ghost by the way it's a gospel that many of you know and love jesus died for your sins rose from the dead on the third day and if you receive him into your heart you will be saved and have an eternal home in heaven you also have a father in heaven have you heard this before mm -hmm. almost everyone has heard this before mm -hmm. who doesn't appear in this particular gospel i just said the holy, the holy ghost doesn't even show up you have a father in heaven jesus you receive into your heart mm -hmm. who doesn't appear the holy ghost the Holy Ghost in this gospel is not necessary he's unnecessary in this gospel I just preached are you here you mad at me yet I hope I'm making my case some would say oh yeah but you can receive the Holy Ghost and speak in other tongues and then you'll have power that comes you know after you know you, you go with this gospel and then you receive the Holy Ghost you're just adding the Holy Ghost to your man-made gospel people that add the Holy Ghost to their version of the gospel their gospel never changed they just put the Holy Ghost as an additive on it that's not what Jesus said stay here until you can add some of the Holy Ghost to your gospel the Holy Ghost add-on is still the same religious point of view that you had before you added him on i know i've been there i've been with all of these people it's the same thing it's the same gospel it's just an additive a holy ghost additive which is better than to not i suppose but it's night and day different this is night and day different what i'm talking about and what i'd like to get across to you if i may is that until you receive the holy ghost and know him as god you can't know the gospel you can't know the true gospel you can't preach the true gospel some people are so indoctrinated with that version of the gospel that even when they begin to worship the holy ghost 
they have feelings of guilt as if Jesus is somehow upset with them for receiving and worshiping the Holy Ghost that's how indoctrinated they are in it well the three-fourths majority of the early believers won out and effectively killed the one that was sent to be with them they effectively removed the Holy Ghost the one that was sent to be with them just like the Israel and the Jews they killed the one that was sent to them through their religious beliefs same thing we came up with a man-made version of the gospel that doesn't have the Holy Ghost as the root of it it is generally accepted that receiving the Holy Ghost is beneficial but not necessary without the Holy Ghost they don't even know the gospel and I realize these are strong words but I'm coming from a different side here this is night and day different from what I was doing before they knew Jesus was raised from the dead and they took off with their own ideas and their own wisdom of men and made converts John 14 26 says when he this is the words of Jesus when he the Holy Ghost is come he will teach you all things let me ask you a question all things does that mean the beginning things the way you should begin something all things is all things he the Holy Ghost when he has come he will teach you all things that will be the way the gospel should be preached and presented John 16 13 says he will guide you into all truth without the Holy Ghost you're not guided into all truth you have some truth you have your version of truth but you can't possibly see it all without the Holy Ghost you don't even know the gospel the beginning of it the middle of it or the end of it so all of those disciples that went off and preached that Jesus was raised from the dead that's not the entire gospel they went off and they preached that they went here and they went there they were in disobedience and they seeded the church with this version of the gospel that is with us to this very day that people when they're embedded in it they reject the Holy Ghost and when you say I worship you Holy Ghost it's like you're speaking a completely foreign thing to them Holy Ghost worshipers know exactly what I'm talking about they've been changed they're different they're not the same as they were before and their view of the gospel is completely different my view of the gospel is that what Jesus came to do was to get me into a relationship with the Living God who is the Holy Ghost that he was going to send and did are you here Holy Ghost worshipers know what I'm talking about this is different than the good religious gospel that they used to embrace and believe and try to walk in if you don't know that this is different you haven't worshiped him the Holy Ghost enough to have him rewire you into this new place you may have mental assent to the things I'm saying but if you haven't worshiped him I worship you Holy Ghost enough you haven't been rewired to be in this new place I hope you can hear it without worship you won't get here not possible you'll come all the way up to the door you'll give mental assent you'll say yes he is God oh yes we should follow him yes we should do what he says but if you don't worship him you haven't fully received him as the one who was sent into the earth to be with you he is God he is the only part of the Godhead in the earth today we worship him we walk with him if you've just come up to the door and you haven't begun worshiping him as God then you're still trying to add some Holy Ghost to your thing there is no adding of him to anything of yours it's Holy Ghost only say Holy Ghost only, Holy Ghost only. Jesus isn't here so they went forth and they preached a man-made gospel they had to make it up the Holy Ghost wasn't giving it to them he was sent 
to be with the ones who received him on the day of Pentecost they were all out there preaching something thinking they were right let me prove it Acts chapter 16 find Acts chapter 16 verse 6 now when they had gone throughout Pergia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden by the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia are you here yes. mm -hmm. this is talking about Paul he was forbidden by the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia and in particular here I mean they didn't really know that much about the Asia we talk about today it was Asia Minor specifically Ephesus he wasn't to go there yet say he wasn't to go there yet he wasn't to go there yet. who forbade him to go there the Holy, Ghost. the Holy Ghost Paul received the Holy Ghost Paul was listening to the Holy Ghost Paul was obeying the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost that he was listening following and obeying told him you can't go over there yet sounds pretty strong too he was forbade by the Holy Ghost between 16 and uh, chapter 19 Paul was then released to go into Asia Minor yeah. by the same Holy Ghost mm -hmm. Acts chapter 19 verse 1 and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth Paul having passed through the upper coasts came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples say finding certain disciples finding certain disciples how are there disciples in this location where paul was forbade to go by the holy ghost verse 2 and he said unto them first words of paul to these people have you received the holy ghost since you believe notice he didn't say have you received Jesus in your heart do you know that if you would die today would you go to heaven is that what Paul said no. why didn't he say that if that's if that's if that's the right gospel the right gospel leads you to worshiping the Holy Ghost as God in the earth today have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe now look at this and they said unto him we have not so much as even heard whether there be any Holy Ghost somebody preached a gospel to them that hasn't even heard whether there be any Holy Ghost what I just read scripture so whoever preached the gospel to them did not preach a gospel that was based or came out of the Holy Ghost it came from someplace else it came from man's wisdom it came from man's understanding of the scriptures they may have seen they may have seen Jesus raised from the dead but then they were disobedient to preach a gospel sans Holy Ghost what did Paul do immediately corrected it he saw he met these people he said have you received the Holy Ghost we have not so much as to the smallest degree we have not so much as even heard that there was any holy ghost how could they receive the holy ghost how could they be walking with the holy ghost how could they be worshiping the holy ghost how could they be walking with him by saying words they couldn't this statement is an indictment of disobedience and we are living with the present day results of that disobedience that gospel has continued to this very day are you seeing it Paul's first words to them was have you received the Holy Ghost not have you received Jesus into your heart not do you know you'll go to heaven when you die can you see how these are man-made constructs where Paul said have you received the Holy Ghost the destination of the gospel is you receiving the Holy Ghost have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed Jesus came that you might receive him the Holy Ghost 
Acts chapter 18 and verse 24 now we're gonna see where these disciples came from verse 24 and a certain Jew named Apollos born at Alexandria an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus so we know something about him already he knows his scriptures what he knows about them and he's an eloquent man so he can talk people into things verse 25 this man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit meaning and not in the Holy Spirit it's not capital S he wasn't fervent in the Holy Spirit because we'll see here in a minute he knew nothing about the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. because his disciples said we know nothing about the Holy Ghost fervent in his own spirit you know people can be fervent in spirit you ever get fervent in spirit at a football game it's fervent in spirit he's very he's he's animated about the things he's saying because he believes he knows what he's talking about fervent in spirit he spake and taught diligently the things of the lord knowing only the baptism of john verse 26 and he began to speak boldly in the synagogue whom when aquila and priscilla had heard they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of god more perfectly aquila and priscilla were like you got a lot of this good a lot of it's good but this is better this is more perfect you're missing it here yeah. are you seeing this mm -hmm. verse 28 for he mightily convinced the jews and that publicly showing by the scriptures that jesus was the christ is that good yes yeah but can that take you all the way where you need to be no. every one of those brethren who didn't wait around for the holy ghost would have been able to tell people that jesus was the christ he rose from the dead paul had to deal with this you see how paul began dealing with it he said the first thing out of his mouth have you received the holy ghost yes. since you believed first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 1 now first of all do you remember that Apollos was in Corinth at that time and I brethren when I came unto you came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom who is Paul talking about here right now Apollos, Apollos had excellency of speech and wisdom in the scriptures right yes. declaring unto you the testimony of God verse 2 for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified I present to you this translation is woefully inadequate Paul was saying I knew I determined I determined pre before I went to this place to you that you would only know about Jesus and him crucified that he wouldn't know anything among them except that I mean they wouldn't know anything there except jesus christ and him crucified verse 3 and i was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling oh it almost makes me angry yeah. was paul in weakness and fear and much are you kidding this is the guy that went up hey you know they're they're over there they're worshiping diana they're all chanting loudly with their broomsticks and their pitchforks let me go in there and straighten it out he's in weakness and fear and much trembling no his weakness with them is that they knew nothing except Jesus and him crucified his weakness was that his hands were already pre tied behind his back I know exactly what he's talking about when you go and preach to certain Christians they don't want to hear what you have to say that's what he was afraid of say that's what he was afraid of that's what do you understand that terminology because this terminology makes it seem like Paul was very weak and he was scared and he didn't know what to say and I mean that doesn't sound like Paul, anything we know of Paul no. before Paul got saved he was marching Christians together and having them stoned Paul was no weak mild-mannered man with some weakness and fear and trembling he didn't know what to do and so he determined just to talk about Jesus and him crucified because they'd get mad no he knew that that's all they knew and he knew he was already behind the ball so to speak to get his message across because Apollos had been there preaching and preaching and preaching and preaching and preaching with the scriptures telling about Jesus and him him being crucified am I getting my point across 
so I was with you in weakness that's the weakness in fear and in much trembling and my speech verse 4 and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom again can you see the slight jab here mm -hmm. you've been used to this you've been used to this kind of preaching man's wisdom declaring the testimony of God mm -hmm. my speech my preaching or literally my message and the preaching of the message was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but was in demonstration was in revealing with an open show of the spirit and his power paul showed up and started talking about have you received the holy ghost since you believed his message was about revealing of the holy ghost who is god in the earth today verse 5 that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of god your faith your belief your religion would stand in the power of god or in god's power the god of power the holy ghost your faith would be established in knowing the holy ghost and his power it's different than what they knew you may need a complete overhaul use of these words will do it i worship you holy ghost i worship you holy ghost i worship you holy ghost i was given those words to use use of those words will give you a complete overhaul if the gospel you got didn't lead you to worship the holy ghost as god you got a man-made gospel may sound just fine probably get you to heaven when you die but it's man-made nonetheless and it is built on disobedience and it will never get you to this place where you should be worshiping the holy ghost as god walking with him by saying words in the earth today if you want to reject me that's okay you can just go back to the religious box that you came out of with your sad religious toys that don't really work anyway that box where you know everything you don't need anybody to tell you anything in that box i know all the walls are the same walls they've been here year after year but i am a sent one with a message not every ministry gift has a message i understand that most ministry gifts preach within the confines of the doctrine of the group of believers that they're in i get it i know it i've done that but you can't worship the holy ghost in the right way and stay there you'll need to come out and be a part of those who worship the living god and walk with him as god in the earth today join me be a part use the words i worship you holy ghost and know the new and living way that will take you far beyond the religious box that you've been living in and put you in a completely different space it's better over here thank you holy ghost for blessing these people and that they have heard the word this evening and things have changed in them things they never saw before they've seen for the first time and it's a revelation that will continue to grow and expand until they've been completely rewired and walk with you as god in the earth we worship you holy ghost we thank you for it in jesus name amen, amen. if you have a tithe or an offering hold it in your hand say this after me holy ghost, holy ghost. you are god in the earth today you are god in the earth. i worship you i thank you, I thank you. for developing in me this new way of living a life that I couldn't access before but I'm accessing it now and it's great in Jesus name amen the father is in heaven Jesus at his right hand Holy Ghost
Joe, God, and the earth. 